Hello, hello, Joanne fans. So good to see you. My name is Vicki Howell. I am a designer, a craft ambassador, and the creator and host of The Knit Show with Vicki Howell. And I am so happy to be here again with my partners, Joanne, to bring you some more crafty goodness. My specialty is fiber arts, but if you can paint it, stitch it, nail it, photograph it, I'm into it. I just want you to be creative. But right now, if you're here in the Craftyville, you're probably thinking about handmade items. I know that I am. This is my jam this time of year. But if it's Christmas that you're celebrating, tick-tock, we're getting closer, right? And But that doesn't mean that we can't still add a little handmade love to our holiday gatherings and under the tree or by making a tree. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to show you how to simply and creatively create hot pads that are felted. So they're actually, not only are they cute, but they're really, really usable. Years ago, a girlfriend of mine made me a, just a plain old square hot pad using the same method I'm going to show you today. And I've had it for at least a decade. I really use it. Often we make these things and it's, you know, it's a show of our hearts and our love, but are they actually practical? Maybe not. And, you know, who cares most of the time. But if you have the added benefit of something being cute and festive and also, you know, totally usable, we are totally winning this holiday season, right? It's good to see everybody. I see people um, starting to say hello. Hello, Wanda. Hello, Nicole. Please tell me what you're making for either holiday gifts or for those parties that you might be going to. So a couple weeks ago, I was also on um, the Joanne Facebook page showing you how to make a wine bottle cozy. That's another great project for hosts, and you can find that on their blog, um, the pattern for that on their Creative Spark blog. Today, I wanna come back and show you another alternative, these hot pads that I'm telling you about, and they're really, really quick. So you could whip one of these out within you know, have it done within a few hours. So you could start one in the afternoon, take it to a party um, in the evening. These are also really great for, you know, like peripheral gifts, like just little action, you know, added benefits. Or if you want to give a teacher gift, uh, you know, along with a gift card or, you know, to you know, a postal service worker that you love or an office mate or whatever, these are really great. So first let's talk about supplies. What you need, so we're going to be felting. Actually, before we talk about supplies, let me talk about felting. So if you're not familiar with it, felting can be done with um, either knit or crochet. I'm going to be knitting today. But the key component is you need to have a yarn that is 100% animal fiber, so wool. So if you are walking down the yarn aisle, there's tons of great yarns that have acrylic in them or some kind of rayon or whatever. Save those for other projects. It won't work for these. What we're going to be doing is the same concept as if you took, all of us have had this experience in our life one time or another where we had this great sweater that we loved, we accidentally threw it in the washer and dryer and it came out three sizes too small. We're doing that on purpose today. So that is called felting. So let me go back to supplies and then we'll talk about a little bit more about what that means. What you'll need for this project is one ball of 100% wool yarn. At Joann's, one, the one that I found, um, is called Peyton's Classic Wool Bulky, or excuse me, Peyton's Classic Wool Roving. Just make sure it's 100% um, wool. That's all that matters. And you can either go traditional green, or I really like going, you know, sort of like a modern white, or I like to bring turquoise into everything. So I do that. So you'll just need one ball for this project. Um, I see people that are still coming in. Hi, Norma. Hi, April. Um, April's crocheting or knitting. Let's see, April crochet or knitting, making a tree or else. I'm not sure what you're asking, but I'm going to be knitting and then we're going to be cutting and, well, felting and then cutting. All right, so we've got our wool. You also are going to need large needles. So when you're felting, you wanna knit on much larger needles than you would normally use. A project will felt better if it's looser because there's more room for the agitation to cause the felting to meld. Um, if you use smaller needles and you have a tighter fabric, it's really hard for those fibers to really like rub together and agitate and then um, shrink in. So you need big old needles. My favorite for this um, project, you need size 19s. 
but um, you can, um, and I want to just pause here because I see some people are crocheters. You can absolutely do this project as crochet, just translate it, and you'll see how you won't even need a pattern to do that. I'll talk you through it in a second, but you still want the same yarn and you want a very, very big hook. So that would be a 15 millimeter hook. I'm not sure what that translates into on US size, but just look for 15 millimeter or about that. So these are size 19s. I love these needles. These are by um, Clover, they're Takumis. Sometimes when you work with a larger needle, they can be really heavy, and that's hard, especially if you do a lot of knitting and crocheting, and we all are crafting our little hearts out during this season. Your wrist can really feel that. So I like to not only use circular, even though we're just knitting flat so that I don't have the long, heavy weight of, of um, straight needles, but I also like these Takumis because they're bamboo and they're super lightweight. Again, it does not have to be a circular needle. It's just my preference because I like the weight of my project to be on my lap versus in my wrist. Okay, so we've got our 19s. We've got our wool. The only other thing that we need um, is a crochet hook. Any size doesn't really matter. Um, you can go with the corresponding size that it says on the label. Uh, we're just going to be using it for a quick chain, so not a big deal, and you can actually skip that part even. You need something to make a hole with, and we can talk about that later. You're also going to need, as an optional, we're doing a little needle felt design. Again, this is optional. You can skip it, but if you're interested, there's a needle felting. This is also by Clover, and a needle felting uh, mat, and then roving or more wool yarn. The roving can you can find also at your craft store, um, but you could also just use strands of the yarn too, and I'll go over that. So we're gonna talk a little bit about knitting, but it's pretty basic knitting, but we're mostly gonna talk about felting and also needle felting. All right, so the first thing that we need to do is talk about sizing. So for this project, you are not going to be doing any e increasing, any decreasing at all. All you're doing is knitting a square. That's all we're doing to start. So this is a great first project. If you've been dabbling, if you've been thinking, you know, I want to learn how to knit, but I don't know, I don't want to commit to anything big, you can absolutely do this. And if you go on to um, my at Vicki Howell YouTube page, I'm sure Joanne has them as well, um, or YouTube channel rather, I have how to knit, how to crochet. I also have several online classes. I'm sure Joanne does as well. And then of course the knit show, we do a ton of knitting. <coughs> Excuse me. All right. For this project, because I wanted it to be thick for a, a hot pad, and I want to show you, here's a little piece that's cut, how thick this is. To achieve this, you need to double strand your yarn. So what that means is you're going to take your label off, and you're going to pull from the center <clears throat> and get one end. and then pull from the outside to get the other end. Now, if you use just one strand, you don't need to use size 19s, you would use a smaller needle. It will it will still work to felt, but it's better for making ornaments and not hot pads. It's not really gonna be thick enough to protect your hand. So the felting will work, you just won't achieve the same um, level of thickness. So all you wanna do is you wanna hold the two strands together as if they were one, and then use whatever method that you want to cast on the stitches. And I won't go over casting on and knitting here because this project is really, it would be nice if the yarn was actually on the needles. Um, this pro project, it doesn't matter what method of knitting or casting on that you use, but you are gonna cast on 22 stitches. The instructions for this project, the complete instructions are also on the Creative Spark blog on the Joanne website. Okay, so you're gonna cast on with a double strand of yarn, again, wool yarn, and you're going to knit until the piece is 12 inches. Now, the reason why I've chosen this is because I've also provided a downloadable of the tree pattern and I've tested it a few times, and you need to go to 12 inches with the shrinkage, which I'm about to show you, for this pattern to be the right size. But if you want bigger or smaller, you could just make your own pattern, or you could do a totally different shape, which is where felting comes in. All right, so to felt wool, you, you have a couple of choices. You can either machine felt it, and if you do that, you want to get a bag like this, a lingerie bag, or a zippered... Uh, um, 
pillowcase, or if you don't have a zippered pillowcase, you could even rubber band one. It just needs to stay closed. You're gonna throw it inside, put it in your machine. I would also throw in a pair of jeans or a towel or something, and then you wanna put it on the hottest setting, maybe at 30 minute intervals. Now, if you have a front loading machine, it's going to take much longer. It will work, but you may have to do four cycles. If you have a regular top loading machine that has the agitator, it'll go faster. If you don't wanna use your machine, you can also use the elbow grease. I did that for one this morning. It worked just fine and it's actually kind of faster, but it'll make you sweat. To do that, all you need is about a tablespoon of soap. It can be shampoo, it can be dish soap, it doesn't matter for this project, and really hot water. As hot as your hands can stand, I recommend wearing gloves too. And you wanna just agitate, you wanna just rub. It's the combination of soap and the hot water and the agitation that's going to make it shrink. And I see somebody saying I they wish they had a Joann's closer. I totally feel you, but joann.com has all of this stuff too that you can just order and have it shipped. Okay, so what happens is, so you'll pull it out of the bag, and what you want is you want the stitches to meld together. Now, you have a choice here. It can be as felted as you want. You can completely get rid of the stitch definition. But let me tell you that if you do that in this for this project, this particular pattern probably will be too small, so you'll have to freehand a tree, but I believe in you, you can totally do it. And Joanne has just posted the link within the comment section right here for you to get the pattern, the written pattern instructions. Okay, so what happens is you keep checking it not melded enough, put it back, do another wash cycle, and just lather, rinse, repeat, literally, right? Until you get a piece that looks about like this. Now, you can see there is still some st stitch definition, but the important part is that you don't see any holes, and that this is a really thick piece. I mean, you, you'll be able to tell when you hold it in your hand that the, it's not floppy anymore, but I wanted to show you the difference in size. This is what the piece looks like when it shrinks. So you'll see there's quite a bit of shrinkage. It's both art and science. The general rule is that the shrink, the shrinkage is about 30%, but there's so many variables to that. Different colors can shrink at different rates, depending on what size needle you use, um, meaning how big your holes are, might change the rate too. So if you need something to be a particular an exact size, I would do a lot of swatching. But for this, for a hot pad, it totally doesn't matter, right? Um, my particular pattern is size, I believe, to be for a nine inch pot holder, but you could absolutely, you know, make this smaller or bigger if you wanted to. Okay, so once we've done that, we are going to print out our pattern. And this is the point where I am going to go ahead and flip the camera over so I can show you the next steps. So. This is what the piece looks like closer. Amanda's asking how we get it to shrink that much. It's just really continuous washing. You just, it, this took in the washing machine. Now I have a front loading machine, so there's no agitator, so it took a long time. I wanna say this was maybe four cycles, but it does work and it's kind of magical, really. Okay, so. Again, it'll shrink more, the bigger the needles, the more that there, the more room there is for these holes to close, the faster it'll happen. All right, so once you get this piece, you're going to lay your pattern on, and you can either just pin it, or you could draw around it, whatever you'd like to do. I also should stop and say, this right here makes a great hot pad in and of itself. If you striped it, you could absolutely just not cut it and use this just out as it is. It would be really cute striped. You could actually, even before you felt it, you could crochet an edging with a loop and then felt it after that if you wanted to do that. This is your blank canvas. Let's say trees aren't your gig. Save this pattern because you can use this for any holiday or no holiday at all. Be really cute to make a an ornament or a snowman or any sort of cool geometric shape, whatever. This is your blank canvas, so you do that, and then from there you can just create any kind of pattern and then cut it out. So all you do, it's really easy to cut through. You're gonna put down your pattern, and you're going to cut it out. Oh, I should make one comment about drying your piece when it's wet. So if you're working with, this, with the machine, 
the spin cycle will mostly dry it. I just put it on kind of like a baker's rack after that to dry. If you're working with the sink though, you wanna take your piece out, lay it on a towel, and then roll the towel like this, get all the excess water out, and then let it dry. Okay, moving on. So you've cut your pattern out, or you've taken your pattern, you've cut it out, and you'll get a little piece like this. Obviously changing colors. Isn't that so cute? Really easy. This will cut just like any other fabric. You don't have to worry about it unraveling. It really is just like if you were buying really thick felt. Okay, so what we have left to do here is we need a hanging loop for it, and then we need to decide if we wanna decorate it with needle felting. Again, this would work like this. You could do nothing else and this would be really cute. Put a pot on it, adorable, right? But if you want to have a hanging loop, all you need to do is first create a hole. So I, you can use anything that you want to make a hole. I have one of these um, hole punchers, like a leather hole puncher for, she, I always keep it around for if I need an extra hole in my shoes or a belt or whatever. A regular hole punch could t potentially work or a an awl will work or a nail and a hammer. But the point is, is that you just wanna go about an inch down and make a hole. You can see that hole is a nice start, but I want it to be a little bit bigger so I can get a hook through. So I just take, I have another Takumi needle and I just kind of poke it through and make that so that it's a significant hole. Okay, from here we're going to use the same yarn, only this time we're gonna to go to just a single strand. And let's see. So you're gonna grab your crochet hook and the size doesn't really matter. I'm using one of the more hooks. Um, it's actually probably a little bit bigger than I need for this yarn, but again, it doesn't matter. You're gonna take your hook, you're going to insert your hook through the hole and then place a slip knot onto the hook and pull it through. Let's try that again. My piece is a little bit wet. I made this one this morning. I decided I wanted another one. Okay, we're going to then slip stitch. If you do not crochet, if you have no desire to crochet, you can also at this point tie a piece of ribbon in it. A piece of twine would be cool. Um, you know, anything really will work. All right, so from here, you're going to just chain. Margo's asking if this will work for crochet. Absolutely, I would just use, all you need to do is create a piece that is about, oh, let's say 11 by 12 inches, and I would do a looser stitch. I would do maybe a double crochet, um, just because I think that that'll meld a little bit easier. And then you can do the same from here. Um, Margaret's saying there is not a link to the PDF. If it is not there, it will it will be there imminently. And I'll also post it in the comment section because it's absolutely available. Okay, so you would just create your chain as long as you want it to be. Then you're going to insert back into the hole, yarn over, and you'll have two loops left, pull through. Okay, from here, I'm gonna grab my scissors. And pull this through. All right, now, because because we have felted this, we don't have to really worry about weaving in ends. I just have a large eyed tapestry needle that I'm feeding this through to the other side. But then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my needle felting tool that I'll be using later and I'm just gonna secure, whoops, actually I don't wanna do that on my table. I'm gonna add my mat. I'm just gonna secure this, the ends a little bit, right here and it'll just meld it into it. You can just snip it, and then you don't have to worry about weaving it in. in. 
and you can go for as long as you like and make it so that it's really melded in. You would just continue until you are satisfied for that. And now you've got a hanging loop. So that is all there is to that. All right, so the last thing I wanna show you is how to create a little decoration. So for this version, I used Roving as Snow, and then for my more modern kind of version, the rustic version, I used Snow. And then I, I used the same concept here, but I decided to do kind of a little garland. Have fun with it. I wouldn't necessarily do beads or sequin or anything because if you if people are actually using this, they'll be setting hot stuff on that, and that may that may go awry. So all you want to do is you want to take. just a little bit of roving or you could use just some of the leftover scraps of yarn you want to take this is a needle felting tool and it, it's actually found in the same aisle as the knitting needles so you one-stop shopping and the crochet hooks and you can either use just a foam block or this is an actual bristle brush uh, needle felting mat you just take a little bit, lay it where you want. I wanted it to just look like there was a little bit of snow just on the edges. And you start punching it. Taking care to keep your fingers out of the way because it is, you know, several needles. And you can kind of make it however you like it. You can snip the ends. until you're satisfied. And you can kind of just use your fingers to manipulate it to whatever shape you want it. Because I think, I don't know, it's snow, I kind of want it to come up a little bit, so I'll just take my nail and kind of move it up and then secure it that way. And that's all there is to it. You would just continue doing that maybe on the top, seems like snow would be on the top of a tree. You can trim it to the shape that you want. Just have fun with it. Let it meld. And it's actually pretty kind of zen to just sit here and needle felt. My teenage son was in here this morning and he started using this. He was checking it out. He's like, oh, this is actually kind of fun. So there you go, an 18-year-old in it to win it. Okay, and that's all that there is to it. I'm going to go ahead and turn around again. So a really quick fun, usable craft that, of course, we can use for the holidays, but we can actually save this pattern and use it all year round. I mean, nature. Nature is seasonless, right? Mm. It, it has seasons. That was what, you know what I mean. Being woodsy, you could use these anytime, or you could not do, not go the tree route. You could create your own shapes. Regardless, though, if you make it, we want to see it. So be sure to tag at Vicki Howell and at Joanne when you make your hot pads. If you are still looking for more inspiration for holiday, just quick crafts, of course, Joanne's got your back. I also have your back at thenitshow.com and on YouTube at The Knit Show with Vicki Howell. There's an entire playlist dedicated to my partnership with Joanne. And we have um, a, a bunch of stuff, including a wine cozy, which I mentioned earlier. There are also, I also have a entire episode called The Handmade Holiday Episode. So um, a bunch of fun stuff. Fellow blogger, a Joanne blogger, uh, Kara Witten also was on it last week, I believe, and we showed how to make felted wool ball uh, drink stir cozies, the little ornaments, not cozies, drink stirs, so adorable. Anyways, we've got all kinds of great stuff for you. I hope that you are having the most lovely holiday season. I love that you're hand making it. Makes my whole heart happy. Have a happiest of Christmas, New Year, Hanukkah, whatever you celebrate. I'm so happy that you're celebrating it with us and that you're including a little creativity in your life. Bye.